Hey everybody, TBG Hunter here, and welcome back to more Battalion Wars Revisited. Last time we took part in one of my favorite missions in the Dune Sea campaign, and also in the game entirely, uh, Gunship to the Desert, where we did actually a pretty decent job, although my speed and technique were kind of lacking in that one. But we still got the S-Rank, so that's all that really matters to me. Anyways, it's time for us to finally close out the Dune Sea with Black Gold. Another pretty decent mission, if I do say so myself. It is one of the, another one of the more open-ended missions. If we halt the Axelvanians in relentless advance, we must destroy their primary neurocyte extraction facility. The only sure way to topple those extraction towers is from the air. Clear a path uh, through the anti-air defenses and pilot your bombers to victory. The enemy's primary neurocyte extraction facility is just north of our position, Commander. Before we attack, we're going to have to neutralize their anti-air defenses. You will then receive clearance to deploy a frontier bomber and precision strike those extraction towers. Remember, you need to take out the enemy's anti-air defenses before we can bomb those towers. Alright, yes ma'am. So, like I said, this is one of the more open-ended missions. We got a couple of encampments between here and the extraction towers. Well, actually, they're kind of littered throughout the entire canyons, but whatever. Uh, for the most part, they are relatively lightly guarded. They only got like a grunt or two protecting the anti-air vets, or ACAC vets in this case. Uh, but the more important thing you need to be on the lookout for are the minigun vets up on top of, like, the cliffs, and also the heavy tanks patrolling around in the canyons. There's, I think, like, three, four heavy tanks patrolling around here, so you need to be very careful of them. This mission also introduces a new veteran type. The mortar vets fire grenades up and over obstacles. Use them to flush enemy infantry out of cover. Press and hold the A button to increase the blast radius of each mortar grenade. So, mortar vets, I... I don't mind them as much as some of my people might think. They're not as good as bazooka vets in terms of taking out vehicles. In fact, I would relatively say only have them attack vehicles if it's a last resort. But they are good for taking care of ground forces that are hiding behind cover. You can charge up their mortar shots and give it a little bit of a delay timer unless it hits an enemy directly. And for the most part, they're usually good for a passive role instead of an active role. So in that case, uh, I'm going to swap to one of my boys. Nope, not him. Attack him. I want to leave my gunships behind because the ACAC vets up ahead will be able to take them down relatively easily. And also the fact that the ground forces can take care of these encampments, no problem. The gunships are only really useful for in this mission is to take out the heavy tanks patrolling around. So once we get them taken care of, it's best to usually keep the gunships at a safe distance. Because the ACAC vets have some pretty significant range to their weapons. I always kind of found it weird uh, of their name because they just kind of sound a little goofy to me, but I believe that they're named that because of the weapons that they use. Instead of using, like, regular anti-air missiles, even though they use the missile... Uh, oh, God! Retreat! Retreat! Now, as I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, the reason behind them being called what they're called is less so because of the fact that they use the uh, other just like the classification, and more so the fact that they literally wield giant uh, anti-air flat guns instead of regular missile launchers, even though they technically use the, the missile effects for their anti-air attacks. Which... When you remember that the Exylvanians are supposed to be vampires, and usually vampire lore makes it so that they are ridiculously strong, it kind of makes them seem a little badass that they just wield around flat guns uh, all willy-nilly like that. And of 
Unfortunately, we lost what looks to be a grunt and an assault vet. I don't think we lost any of our mortar vets, though, so we're pretty good uh, for the most part. Guys, what are you doing? Two down! Three more on the play sheet! Alright, so we got the other encampment over there. Extraction towers over there. I'm going to send the gunships Italian. right the here so they can attack the tanks and, and the ground games. forces up by the extraction tower while the rest of the ground forces come with me and we're going to go hit the under encampment. Okay, that's the gunships attacking the tank. Oh, boys, waste them. Give them hell, boys. Get him, take care of him. Three down, only two remaining. Another of Ubel's anti air emplacements is destroyed. The enemy's tactics are most strange. Surprise, it's taking them this long to realize what we're doing. Okay, they did take out the tank uh, pretty easily. So let's call Your it over. He knows no bounds, Commander Ubi. They are clearing a path for an airstrike on the attack towers. All right. Now yeah, we're just gonna sneak our gunship over here real quick, get the attention of the heavy tank, and slowly fall back so that way they follow after us and we don't get within range of the anti-air emplacement. But I will probably take care of the minigun vet that's sitting right there with the gunship because I think we're still just outside the safe zone for... Wait. I just killed one of my mortar vets. Oh, the minigun vet up there came down and is attacking the, the battalion. Oh my god, he actually got a, a sneak attack on all my mortar vets. How dare he? How's the strike team looking? Well, aside from the one guy who died, uh, they're looking pretty good. Alright. We're this late into the campaign, buddy, and already you're wondering who these guys are? Jeez, I knew the grunts for the frontier are oblivious at times, but this is getting a little ridiculous. Guys, where are you even pointing that gun? There we go. Let's get a sneak attack around him behind his little defense. And really, you guys are just gonna run up on him and not do anything about it? Grunts, you take the rockets. Assaults, you take the Akak. -ak. Mortars, you take those rockets. And Recon, you just run interference. Uh oh. You are a bit of a problem. Call in the gunships just yet because this guy will definitely prioritize taking him out. But that's the last of the ground forces. You have a green light to commence your bombing run on those. This is your first time in the cockpit of a frontier bomber, right? I'll talk you through the control systems. If you press and hold the R button, you can use the control stick to raise and lower the bomber's altitude. Press the A button to open the bomb bay doors and release a cluster of fuel air bombs. Alright, get rid of the target. You can also use the camera thing to get into a bomber view. And you can just uh, start bombing these things to your heart's content. Honestly, Frontier Bombers and Bomber Units in general for the rest of the series are like some of the most fun units in the entire game. 
And yes, I know the gunships aren't going to do anything against the extraction tower. I'm just doing it for aesthetic purposes. But yeah, bombers are really fun to do. It's just fun to just like fly fast, oh, hit their units the uh, when they least expect it, and get out of there before they have a chance to respond. We must defend those towers. Dispatch both our squadron immediately. But you're flying a little low. Though. I think you might want to pull up a bit. Our bomber is defenseless against them. It's almost as if we should have brought a fighter squadron sure, as protection. Tundra's finest pilots will protect you until your mission is complete. Zargorgi? I thought you were in exile. Oh god. Alright, so... As you can see, Exylvanian fighters have joined the fray, and they are pretty deadly. You need to be very careful uh, when you have a tail behind you, because I uh, think a few passes in your bomber's toast. Thankfully, though, Tundran fighters have also joined the battle, so they'll easily mop up the Exylvanian fighters while you focus on just bombing the towers. Just one more extraction tower left on the scorecard. In fact, for the most part, uh, the Exylvanian fighters are going to spend more time trying to run from the Tundrans than they are going to prioritize attacking the bombers. Uh, no, gotcha. Right, rocket, rocket, don't want that. I want to get the tower and direct our other bomber to it. And it looks like the Tundrans took care of the rest of the Exylvanians, so cool. The skies are all clear. God, that mess up there. Zargorgi, do you copy? Yes, Nova. I have returned. And victory is my traveling companion. Father. Let go of me! Father! Who is this? What have you done with the Tsar? I let him go. Kaiser Vlad sends his regards. Son, you must understand. I acted in the best interests of the Tundran Empire. <sighs> I know, father. <sighs> well, I feel like I don't deserve that technique because we just lost Gorky, but I'll take the 100% as consolation. I'm honestly surprised we did pretty well with getting 100 everything, especially since we lost a good number of our ground forces, but hey, you know what, I'll take it. Alright. Even though this showed up back in the second level of the game, uh, this was the first time we actually got to play with the Frontier Bomber. It has a crew of 3, a speed rating of 3, a weapons of 3, and an armor rating of 4. Its role is air to ground, but it's vulnerable to fighters and anti-air units. The Valentine B-58 has the armor, skin fuselage, and payload of fuel-air bombs that can pulverize ground targets. However, without fighter escort, the B-58's two HMG blisters offer only light defensive capabilities against enemy air attack. Yeah, you know, it was kind of dumb of Frontier Command not to, you know, at least authorize a fighter squadron to protect the bombers, and we just got really lucky that Gorgi was in the area to provide us with air support. Even if it did cost him his life, and I know Nova's taking it pretty personally. We also got introduced to the Mortar Vet. It's armed with a Groundhog 50mm grenade launcher. That is a big grenade uh, caliber. Its role is long-range support, its targets enemies behind walls. The ability of the Mortar Veterans is to fire over walls and defenses to make them invaluable for dealing with entrenched opposition. Use Mortar Troops to blast opponents out of cover or from behind obstacles. Their shells are also effective against vehicles, but only light vehicles, so either send them against recons or light tanks or, I guess, anti-air vehicles as well. 
Don't send him against the heavier units, as you saw how that turned out for me earlier in the, lo in the level. But alright. Well, while we did lose a key fighter for our team in the end of the Dune Sea, and while we could jump into the Coral Atolls and enjoy a nice summer vacation, I'm still not done with the Dune Sea. Next time on Battalion Wars, we begin the dreaded du bonus mission for the Dune Sea campaign. See you guys next time. Later. Let's give him the old frazzle-dazzle!